go ahead and lie back. Just get comfortable. We'll do a little bit of centering while you're lying back. So if you want to lie back with your knees bent, you can do that. That feels better. If you want to put a bolster under your knees or a pillow underneath your knees, that's an option. You can lay with your legs straight. Okay, I'll say that if you do lay with your legs straight and you find it's uncomfortable on your low back, then I would go back to either having a pillow or a bolster under the knees or bending the knees with the feet flat on the floor because that releases your low back just a little bit. And you'll let your arms rest by your sides. Palms are going to face up towards the ceiling. And let's start with our three sighs. So three times you're breathing in through the nose. You're going to open the mouth and give a big sigh. Out through the mouth. You take those three sighs through the mouth. Let your breath just come in and out through the nose. Right now we are working on mindfulness. And all mindfulness is, is simply being aware of each moment as each moment passes without expectation, without judgment, without feeling like you're doing it right or doing it wrong. But instead you're just simply noticing everything that is in that moment. So maybe right now you're noticing the fact that you're breathing. Maybe you can notice physical sensations such as the difference in temperature between the skin of your body that is covered by clothes and the skin of your body that is exposed to the air. Perhaps you take a breath in and you hold the breath for a moment and you feel the beating of your heart. And mindfulness is, of course, not only noticing what is physically present, but also perhaps noticing thoughts. So unlike in other techniques that we do where when a thought comes in, we try to bring our attention back, perhaps to the breath. Instead, when we do mindfulness, we... Allow that thought to linger, but we don't get wrapped up in the content of the thought itself. Perhaps a thought comes in and instead of being involved in the thought, the idea is that you detach yourself, your awareness from the thought and you observe it like a detached observer. The mind has many, many facets and there's the thinking, engaging part of the mind, but then there's this other part of the mind that is just awareness. 
some might call it simply pure consciousness. But it's this really amazing part of you that is constant and is grounded. So I'm going to be quiet for about a full moment, minute here, excuse me, and just allow you to practice that. So if a thought comes in, try not to follow it, but let it be there. And just observe it from that detached part of you. And then just simply now becoming aware, perhaps of the feeling of your body on the floor, on the mat. The room that you're in. The temperature of the room that you're in. And then you're gonna bring your knees in towards your chest. Give, give yourself a nice little knee hug here. You can keep your eyes closed for this or you can open your eyes, it's completely up to you. And a couple options for how you're clasping your legs, perhaps you're grabbing your shins, maybe a little easier you're grabbing your knees or if neither of those are available to you, you can always grab behind your thighs as well, but just go for whatever feels the most comfortable for you. And then bring the knees in just a little bit more if you can. And if possible, lift your head up and maybe you even lift your shoulders up a little bit. So you come into this nice little tight ball. You'll feel the abs start to work just a little. And then you're slowly going to release everything and the upper body back down. Keep holding the legs and now just start to rock the knees side to side. Lovely. Go ahead and place both feet down onto the floor. Your knees are going to be bent here. And we're just going to work with a little bit of arm movement. So I want you to take your both arms down by your sides. And you're, this time your palms will face the floor. And we're going to work just with the right arm first. Okay. So as you inhale, you're going to reach that right arm up towards the ceiling. And maybe it comes up over your head, touches the floor, possibly. And then you're going to exhale, and you're going to bring that arm back down towards your side. You're inhaling, reaching the arm up just as far as it comfortably goes for you. And then you're exhaling, and you're bringing that arm all the way back down. So the movement of the arm is going to correlate with the length of your breath. So if your breath is fast, the movement is fast. But if the breath is slow, then the movement also will be slow.
All right, so the next time that right arm comes down, we're just going to switch sides. We're going to do the left side. So same thing. You inhale as that arm reaches up and over. And of course, you exhale as the arm comes back down by your side. Again, just moving the arm with the breath. Perhaps noticing if this side feels different than the other side. Maybe the range of motion is a little different. And last one on this side, on the left. And then we're going to incorporate both arms together. Okay, so you're just going to inhale and then you're going to reach both arms up and over. And then as you exhale, both arms come back down. Okay, if you want to involve the legs, I know we have an arm that's focused today. If you want to get the legs involved a little bit, then as you inhale and the arms lift up, you can also lift your heels up and just keep the balls on the feet and the toes on the floor. And then as you exhale and the arms come down, then the heels will come back down to the floor. And now that's just an option. Nothing you have to do. So we're going to do one more, just like this. And then your arms are, your palms are going to face up towards the ceiling down by your sides. And we'll come into some snow angels. We're going to do one arm at a time, just like we did with the arms reaching over the head. So we'll start on the right side. And you're just going to see, can you keep all of your fingernails on the floor? So you're going to inhale, you're going to reach that arm up. Maybe it comes over the head, maybe it doesn't. And then you're going to exhale, you're going to bring that arm back down by the side. Right, so as you inhale, the elbow bends, you reach the arm up. And then as you exhale, the elbow comes down and it straightens. So that this time that that right arm comes down, you're just going to rest it by your side. You're going to switch and come over to the left. So the left palm will face up towards the ceiling and then trying to keep all the fingernails on the floor as long as you can. You lift that arm up. And as you exhale, the arm comes back down towards the side. And again, just kind of observing anything that's different on this side, working on that mindfulness. So just noticing what it feels like in the moment without expectation, without judgment.
And then this next time that the left arm comes down, we're going to switch. And now we're going to do all or both arms together. All arms. Like we have eight arms, right? All right. So both arms together, trying to keep the fingernails on the floor as long as you can. Inhaling as the arms lift up, up maybe above the head. Exhaling as the arms come back down. And then maybe one more here. Let this be the last one. And then we're going to give our arms just a little bit of a break here. So let your palms come back down towards the floor. And then bring your arms out about 45 degrees. And you're going to walk your feet so they're about as wide as your mat. Okay. I want you to flex your feet. So what I mean by that is the balls of the feet lift up, the toes lift up, but the heels stay down on the floor. And we're just going to come into a little windshield wiper of the knees. So as you exhale, press your right shoulder down, drop your knees to the left. And then as you inhale, bring it back up to center, press the left shoulder down, drop the knees to the right. And then you just kind of move back and forth with your breath. So the reason I'm having you breathe this way is because I want you to really slow it down. Okay, sometimes we do our windshield wiper of the knees and we're just kind of flying back and forth with the knees like it's pouring down rain. I want you to think it's sprinkling. So whatever side the knees are dropping, the opposite shoulder is pressing down. And then if you want to get a little bit more stretched in the quadriceps and the hip flexors, whichever knee is on top, you're going to push that knee away from you like it's going to touch the wall on the other side of the room. So if the knees are dropping to the left, I'm going to push my right knee away from me. My hip, my buttock will lift up a little bit, and then I'll give you a nice stretch on the front of that thigh. You're not looking for a stretch there. You don't have to do it. Good. So with my count, I'm going to do one more on each side, keeping it slow. And then just let the knees come back to center. You're going to walk those feet back in so they're about hip distance apart. And then we're going to do a tricep stretch, but on your back. Okay, so your palm, your right palm is going to face up again, and you're just going to lift it up above the head kind of as, as far as it comfortably goes. Okay, so if that means your elbow is bent and you're kind of like in this half cactus, you might stay right there. You might lift it up a little higher, or you might have the forearm resting above the head. Okay, you can stay here. You know, I like to give lots of options, right? So you can stay here. You can also take your left hand and just kind of grab around your right wrist and have that over the head. Okay, so the focus is stretching that right side so the left arm is not necessarily up as high as the right. You're using it. Okay, 
Another option, if you're looking for more stretch kind of in this side torso area, you can straighten your legs. Okay, another option. This one has lots of options. You can start to keep your hips where they are, but shift your upper body over to the left. And if you do that and you find that your right elbow lifts up really high, then I want you to go back and not shift over. And then lastly for this is you can also take your right leg and cross it over the left leg. So each of those options gets you a little bit deeper into the stretch. And then you're just gonna take some slow, big breaths here. If you wanna take some size, you can. Good time for that. Okay, when you're inhaling, I want you to focus the breath on moving into the right side body. Okay, like you're breathing into the whole right side body, the back, the front, and the side. Let that right shoulder relax. Let the right elbow relax. And then you're gonna come out of it in reverse order. So if you crossed your legs, uncross the legs. If you shifted the upper body to the left, shift it back to the right. If you straightened your legs, bend your knees. If you are using your left arm, take the left arm by your side and then take the right arm down, okay? And usually once you get that right arm back down, you can feel a little bit of that stretch that you did. And we're just simply gonna do the same thing this time with the left arm. So you're going to reach your left arm out to the side. And this is part of why I said kind of assess the difference between the right side and the left side when we were doing some of those arm movements earlier, because it will help you determine how far up the arm needs to go. So maybe it's just kind of out to the side. Maybe you're in this half cactus with the left arm. Maybe that arm comes up or maybe the forearm is above the head. You might take that right arm and just cradle the left wrist with your thumb and pointer finger. And just observing how that feels. If you want more stretch, okay? You might start to bring your torso over to the right. You might straighten your leg. You might cross the left leg over the right. But, you know, I say this all the time. Just remember, it's it's okay to be in a completely different position on this side than what you were on the other side. Be mindful, no expectation. And so now maybe really focusing on just noticing the physical sensations as you breathe, breathing into that left side body, the front and the back of it, the side, and really letting that space open up with the breath. And this is more of a passive stretch. We're holding it for a little bit. And you're allowing the flow of your breath to stretch and release that side body. And then, of course, just coming out of it, I'm in reverse order here. So I'm crossing the legs, 
bringing the upper body back to center, maybe letting the knees bend, letting the arms come down. You're good. So I'm gonna have everybody roll over now to your right side. And you can rest your head on a pillow if you like, um, or you can just rest your head on the floor, but your right arm is gonna come out in front of you. And your left hand is gonna come on top of the right hand. Okay, the knees are bent. Legs are stacked. And you're going to inhale. So we're going to do a little chest stretch with a twist. You're going to inhale. You're going to slide that left arm up the right arm across the chest. Open it out so the arms are in a T. And then as you exhale, you're going to swoop that left arm up and over and then touch the right hand again. Okay, so I want you to do that at your own pace. But as you're inhaling, you're opening up, coming into that T. And then as you're exhaling, you're swooping that arm back up and over. Okay, let's do one more. Awesome. So from here, we are going to come up onto our forearm, on the right forearm. So we will get over to the other side here in just a moment. So you're on your right forearm. You can have your hand flat. If it feels better for you to make a fist, kind of come on the side of that forearm, that is fine too. Okay. Your left arm is going to come down by your lower legs. And one thing I want to note is a lot of times we collapse into this right shoulder. So what I mean by that is we're kind of like this, okay? I want you to press down through the forearm and down to the elbow so that you come out of that right shoulder, right? So that your foundation's strong. And then you're going to take your left palm up. You're just going to reach that arm up. Maybe it comes over the head. And then you're going to turn that palm, and then you're going to exhale and bring it back down, okay? Your breath, your pace. Another little side body stretch here. If you want this to be a lot more challenging, you know, sometimes I give options and it just increases the challenge a little bit. Um, this option increases the challenge a lot, okay? So you determine if you want to do it. But if you do, then as that left arm is reaching up, you can press your legs down and lift your hips up as well. So it would look like this, basically coming into a side plank, lifting that arm up, and then exhaling, letting those hips come back down along with the arm. Okay, so that's your choice. If you are coming into that little side plank, I want you to think about bringing those right ribs towards the right hip. Almost like you're making a little um, arc or a rainbow shape with the left side of the body. And this will be the last one. And then we're just going to do those two exercises on the left side. Okay. So if you want to roll over, you can roll over. I'm just switching the sides of my mat so you can continue to see me. All right. So we're coming into that little side body opener. All right. So this time your left arm is out in front of you. Palms facing up, right hand comes on top of that left hand. And when your legs are stacked, when you're ready, you're gonna inhale, slide that arm across the body, open it up. And then you're gonna exhale, right arm comes up and over the body and touches the left palm. Okay, so your breath, your face.
last one here. Once that right palm meets the left, you are gonna, again, just come up this time onto your left forearm, okay? So if it's more comfortable for you to have your palm down, put your palm down, it's more comfortable for you to make a fist, make a fist and come kind of more onto the side of that forearm. Legs are stacked. We'll start just with that right arm. So notice if you're sinking into the left shoulder, push the forearm down a lot, push the elbow down a lot, come out of that shoulder. Especially if you're gonna lift the hips in a moment, do that side plank, you want this foundation really strong. So as you inhale, right arm's gonna reach up. Maybe it comes over the head. And then you flip the palm and you're gonna exhale and you're gonna bring it back down. And so you just kind of feel how this side is the same, feel how this side is different. Okay, if you choose, you wanna to try to lift those hips. You can do that as the arm is lifting, right? So you push the legs down and that forearm. You would lift the hips, reach that right arm up. So even if the right arm isn't coming over the head but and you want to try the leg lift, you can do that. You just don't bring the arm over the head. <laughs> Good. You are lifting those hips up. You just think of kind of making this... Uh, this rainbow or this arc with the right side of the body. Try to bring your left lower ribs towards that left hip. Very good. All right, let's do one more. And then after that, one more. Release that, you're coming right into a child's pose. So from here, you flip on over and your knees are coming nice and wide. Your toes are gonna touch. You bring your hips back as far towards your heels as they can go. And then the arms come out in front and the head's gonna drop. So as you're in child's pose right now, if you find that it's very uncomfortable on your knees, then I recommend putting a rolled up blanket or a pillow or something in between your calf and the back of your thighs. And that relieves some of that pressure in the front of the knee. All right, so from here, we're going to keep our legs how they are, and we're just going to make some circles with our hips. So the arms are still out in front, right? Legs are how they are, and you're going to lift up a little bit, bring those hips out to the side, bring them down, back around the other side, and to the back. So you're just making some big hip circles. Okay, of coming up onto your arms when those hips come forward feels like too much. Make your circle a little smaller. And then you're going to reverse the circle. Okay, so you're just going to bring it around the other side. Very good. All right. So from here, since your arms are further in front of your shoulders, how they typically are in child's pose, we can come into a plank. If you do not want to do plank, it'll be a knee plank. If you do not want to do plank, right, you're just going to bring your arms back so they're under the shoulders and then work on activating the core in tabletop. If you are going to do plank, then the hands come in front of the shoulders. You're going to stay down on your knees, bring your knees underneath the hips so they come in just a little bit, and then you're simply going to let the hips drop, okay? So it's not like the hips are dropping and I'm sagging in my back, like this would be more like a 
cobra or up dog. Okay. You want to engage through the core. Draw the tailbone down. Think of the tailbone touching the back of the knees. And you're going to feel that will engage the core. I'll engage the lower abdominals a little bit more. Try to bring the front ribs towards one another. And breathe. Good. Bring yourself back into a child's pose just really quick because we're going to do that one more time. Beautiful. So unless you're modifying, right, hands out in front of the shoulders, right, you really want to push into the hands. So notice if I'm not pushing into the hands, I do that kind of like sinking in the shoulders again. But if I push my hands down, I come up out of my shoulders, right, big difference. And then you let the hips drop a little bit, tailbone coming towards the back of the knees, hips coming down, but you're not sagging. And then if you have full plank, right, in your practice, if you feel comfortable doing it, you can always tuck your toes. We won't be here long. And you can lift the knees up. So if you do that and you find that your hips are sagging down and the low back is compromised, don't do that. Your low back will end up hurting, right? Work with the knees down. Beautiful. If you're in full plank, drop those knees down. Untuck the toes. Everybody one last time into a child's pose. The knees are going to come wide again. Hips come back towards those heels. Good. Walk your hands over to the right. So getting a side body stretch on the left side. Your left hand might come next to the right. It might come on top of the right. You might cross over the right. It doesn't matter. You're getting that stretch in the left side of the body. Head drops. And then switch sides. You inhale to center. Exhale, walk it over to the left side, getting a stretch down the right side of the body. Figure out where you want that right hand. Let the head drop. Take big breaths. And bring it all the way back to center. Good. So from here, you are going to make your way up to stand. However, that is the easiest for you to do that. Very good. Feels good to stand up after all of that. So we're going to do a little bit of just a standing half moon. Um, we're going to do a tricep stretch, a little bit of more arm movement, and then we will be back down on the floor. So standing half moon is very similar to what we were doing lying on our back. Um, you are going to grab your right wrist with the left right pointer finger and thumb. Modification for this is to bring it across your body. Okay, you're going to get a stretch more in the, the upper back with that, right? You want to go further, your elbow might be in front of your body, but if you want that really big tricep stretch, side body stretch, and you can get the arm above the head, go for that. Push the right foot down and then reach over to the left. Okay, so again, you're making kind of that, that arch, the right side of the body, your right hip is sticking out. And then the more that top elbow comes back, the more stretch you're going to feel. So you are like totally in charge of that, right? Good. 
Good. And you're going to bring yourself all the way back up to center. I just saw someone trying to pop on here. And she went away. So sorry about that. All right. And then we're going to go to the other side. Okay. So now you're grabbing your left wrist. You're going to push that left foot down a lot, right? This leg. Push the hips out to the side and reach over to the right. Breathe. Remember your modification. You can bring that arm in front of you, maybe towards your face, maybe up. But the more that top elbow pulls back, the more stretch you feel in that side body. So again, you stay in charge of that. Beautiful. Bring it all the way back up. Release those arms. Just roll the shoulders a couple times. And then we're going to come into that tricep stretch. Okay. So the tricep stretch, you are going to lift your arm. You're going to bend your elbow. Okay. See if you can touch the opposite shoulder blade. If you can, see if you can touch the same, the same shoulder blade of the arm that is lifted. Right. If you want to, you can grab that elbow. So if you're modified, you're down further. Right. Same thing. You can grab that elbow, roll it in. So you see my elbows not out to the side, my triceps facing forward, and then you start to pull that elbow back any amount. Right? So this has a lot to do with the rotation of the arm to get this stretch right. Again, if my Elbows out to the side, and I'm trying to pull it in like that. It doesn't work as well. You want to roll it in, then pull it back. Awesome. Release that. Of course, we're going to the other side. So that left arm's going to lift up and the elbow. See if you can touch the right shoulder blade. If you can't, or if you can, see if you can touch the left shoulder blade. Grab the elbow, roll it in, pull it back. And you're breathing. Nice, big, slow, deep breaths. Just kind of noticing how you feel in this moment, any sensations, any thoughts. I think all of those are okay to pay attention to while we work on mindfulness. You can do mindfulness when you're still, when you're moving, all the time. Beautiful. Release out of that. Bring your feet nice and wide here. Awesome. All right. So we are going to start with the right arm. Okay. Your left hand might be on your hip if that feels comfortable. Some people like to leave it down. And you are just going to bend your left knee and lift that right arm up and over and then straighten that left leg and come back to center. Okay. Again, you depend on or you determine how far up you want that arm to go. You want to make sure that your knee that's bending is pointing to the second and third toe. So if you need to turn your leg out at all or keep it forward, however, that works for your knee. It's important that it points to that second and third toe. Good. Let's do one more. And then we'll switch sides. All right. Right knee's going to bend. Left arm's going to reach up and over. And then you just bring it back and the leg straightens. Uh, last one. Awesome. Let that arm come down. Bring your feet just to a, a comfortable position. So we're going to do some arm pulses. For me, I want my feet typically just a little bit wider than my hips. Um, so my back doesn't get too involved with it. 
Look down at that imaginary line going across your toes. Make sure that one foot's not further in front of the other one. And we are just going to start to pulse our arms out. And it doesn't seem like a lot when I say it. It doesn't seem a lot like when you start it. But after we do it for a little bit of time, you'll start to feel all those muscles working. So start with your arms out like so. Modification is for you to have your arms more like this. Otherwise, you're just going to start to pulse up and down. And these are tiny. Okay. Not, not really big movements. Okay, things I want you to pay attention to are, are your legs strong? Are those muscles hugging the bones? Like are the muscles gripping? Are you pressing through your feet? Okay, the low belly in. Are you lifting up through the front of the spine? Are the shoulders back? We're just paying attention to all those things, and that helps take the back out of it, the parts of the back that you're not wanting to, uh, to get involved. Keep that lower body strong. Make sure that your neck is relaxed. Good. Now you're going to start to make circles backwards. Okay. So I'll show you kind of from a side view. Instead of my arms making circles here, I'm actually bringing my arms back and making circles like so, okay? The point of that is to get the upper back involved, okay? To modify, you would bring your arms further forward, of course. So you should be starting to feel those muscles working. We're almost out of it. Good, release, roll the shoulders out, let those elbows kind of bend a little bit. And then we're just gonna do some tricep pulses here in just a moment. You said you need weights, right, to build some muscle. All right, you can stay facing how you are. I'm turning just so you can see the demonstration a little bit better. So I don't want my shoulders rolling forward, okay? Roll those shoulders back. Palms are going to face behind you. You can put a little micro bend in your knees, okay? And you're just going to start to bring the arms behind you and pulse, right? So you're just doing these little pulses going up, up and down, up and down, up and down. The knees are bent slightly. The legs are not locked. You might lean forward a little bit if you want. Or you can stay upright. I find if I lean forward a little bit, for my body personally, it's a little bit easier. Um, but I also feel like I get a little bit better range of motion when my body is lean forward. And it's, I mean, it's a very tiny amount. You can see, you can barely tell that I'm leaning forward here. But we're just pulsing, right? Up and down. You want to add a little bit more, you can pulse up and in, right? So I'm kind of doing like this. And release that. Awesome self. All right, roll those shoulders out. And we are going to do just one more for the biceps, the front of the arms. And then we're going to come back down onto the mat. All right, so the arms out in front of you, like so. I like for you to make a fist. Okay, and you're going to bring the arms in and then bring them about halfway out and then pulse it in and out. And so very similar, right? When you first start, it feels like you're not doing a whole lot. And then after you do it for a little bit, you start to notice that you feel more. And if you want to feel even more, you just do it a little faster. You might lift the elbows up a little higher. And breathe, right? I know sometimes when we start doing faster movements or stronger movements, um, we forget about that really deep, slow breath, right? Don't have the breath the same as the pulse right now. 
Good. Release that. Awesome. All righty. So I want you to sit down. Now, however you get down, most easily, go ahead and have a seat. All right. Cross the legs. And we're going to do four fold, twist each side, and then we'll switch the crossing of the legs and do another forward fold. So you want to flex your feet. And what I mean by that is make sure that both your calves are supported by the foot underneath it. I see people sit like this a lot. Okay. So make sure you're supported. And then find where the hip crease is, right? It's where your thigh meets your pelvis. You're folding from there, right, right here. And you're just going to start to fold forward. Your hands come down. Maybe the arms reach out in front. Maybe you drop onto your forearms. Maybe your head drops a little bit. Maybe you let your head rest on the forearms themselves. And all you're focusing on right here is just taking some big deep breaths into the back body now, the back rib cage. Letting that space open up. Good. Bring yourself all the way back up. And we are going to twist. So inhale, reach the arms up. As you exhale, twist it over to the right. Right hand behind you. Right, Left hand coming to the outside of that right knee. And then maybe you're looking over your back shoulder, only if that feels good to you. Doesn't feel good to your neck, you don't look over the back shoulder, okay? And then just observe for yourself, right? Are you even on your sits bones? Are you leaning over onto one more than the other? And then you bring it back to center. Good, and then we'll go to the other side. So inhale, the arms are gonna lift up. Awesome, exhale, twist over to the left. Left hand behind you, yep. Right hand outside of that knee. And then same thing with the neck. If it doesn't feel good to look behind your shoulder, don't do it, okay? Remember, I'm just here to guide you. I'm here to give you different options, different suggestions. But you do what's good for your body. Okay. I like to say, you do you, boo. Do what feels good to you. Do what feels right for you. Good. Bring it all the way back to center again. And then now you are going to switch the crossing of the legs. So the other leg is in front. Usually it feels a little weird because we're creatures of habit and we always cross the same leg in front first. So um, we're going to come back into that forward fold, right? So feet are flexed, find the hip crease, keep the front of the spine nice and long. You start to fold forward. Maybe the hands come down, maybe the elbows come down. Maybe you cross the forearms, let the head drop. What's important here is that your breath is deep. You're breathing into the back of the body, the back of the rib cage. Okay, so this is going into that passive stretch we talked about earlier where you're not engaging much and you're letting your breath do the work for you. You have to breathe anyway. So why not let your breath help stretch you and help relax you? Beautiful. Go ahead and roll yourself all the way back up. Very nice. And then you are going to come into your Shavasana, your final relaxation. Um, so you'll come onto your back. You can come to constructive rest pose. If your little back is uncomfortable, I always recommend this. I know we didn't do a whole lot with our back and legs today. But this can be comfortable with the feet wide and the knees resting on each other. 
You can do like we did in the beginning with a bolster under the knees. Let your arms reach out to the side with your legs straight, right? So whatever option you choose, the idea is that you're comfortable. That's it. And you rest there as long as you like. Part of the beauty of doing this in the comfort of your own home. You get to stay in Shavasana as long as you want. You know that we worked some on mindfulness beginning of our session and so for a moment maybe just going back to that remembering that all mindfulness is 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 paying attention to what is happening right now in the moment that you're presently currently experiencing It might be the feeling of the clothes on your body. It might be the hardness of the floor underneath you. It could be simply noticing the fact that you are taking breaths in and you are taking breaths out. Maybe noticing the difference in temperature between your exposed skin and your covered skin. How perhaps the covered skin feels a little bit warmer. If you want to Keep resting. Maybe you move on to noticing the different thoughts that are running through your mind, but noticing the thoughts from it, that detached observer perspective. Not following the thoughts, but just, you know, letting them be there. Let them linger. They will dissipate. They will float away and a new thought will come in but practicing not getting involved in the thoughts and just letting them move on like like the forms of energy that they are all they are is just energy moving through the consciousness if you decide to continue to rest no i appreciate you Hope you are well, be well, be kind. You decide to come back, start to come back when you're ready. But I say to you that I appreciate you and love you. You guys know I do. The bottom of my heart. I'm always here for you. A phone call, a text, an email away, anything you need. I'm happy to help lend an ear. So, me to you. Peaceful thoughts, peaceful words, peaceful intentions. Namaste. Good. Much love and peace. <laughs> 
And for those of you joining tomorrow, and I will see you tomorrow. Otherwise, hopefully I see you next time.